Hi, I'm David Raker, one of the chemistry professors here at Cedar Crest College in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Let's take a tour of the chemistry department and see why you should choose Cedar Crest College if you're a chemistry or biochemistry major or a concentration in forensic science. What's really great about the chemistry department at Cedar Crest, I believe, is all the hands-on experience the students get in the laboratory. Um, the student does their own experiments, collects her own data, analyzes her own data, draws her own conclusions. So the student gets very technically competent in the laboratory. They have such wonderful technical skills that they're prepared to go off into either the workforce or um, to graduate schools. About 50% of our, a little bit more than 50% of our students go on to graduate schools. The other 50% go into um, industry mostly in industrial chemistry. Um, we have lots and lots of avenues for assistance for helping students with the what can be a difficult field for some students. Uh, we have what are called instructional assistants. They are upper level students who walk, run walk-in tutoring sessions. Um, if a student is having difficulty with any of the concepts, um, the uh, they're called instructional assistants. The instructional assistant is in a particular room at a particular time. All she has to do is go there and seek assistance. We also have the um, advising center where you can uh, um, have one-on-one -on -one, um, tutoring. The other thing I think is really great is the um, we're a women's college, and so it's a single-sex atmosphere in the laboratory. Chemistry is a traditionally male-dominated field. Um, the professional chemical uh, societies, the American Chemical Society, is a slightly under 20% women. So the professional chemists out there, there's fewer than 20%. Uh, and so the Female chemists have to learn to develop their voice as a scientist and become confident of what they know about chemistry and go out and compete in the, in the workforce. Uh, so I think that the single sex atmosphere um, engenders leadership and helps the student find her voice as a scientist. She uh, works with her peers and cooperatively to uh, understand the material and works with her peers in the laboratory. So it's a very cooperative atmosphere and I think that's what uh, develops the confidence in the, the student that she needs to both go out and uh, be successful as a chemist. What about the faculty here in the chemistry department and the forensic science area? Here once again is Dr. Pamela Kissler to talk about that. We have faculty in our department representing all of the major disciplines of chemistry. Our analytical chemist is Dr. Tom Brattell. He's a nationally renowned analytical chemist. He's also a forensic chemist, so he's also nationally known in the forensics community. Uh, Dr. Jean Burke is our organic chemist. She's one of the newer faculty members in our department. Um, the biochemist on our staff is Dr. Marianne Staritz. She's um, very involved in cancer research. I myself am a physical chemist. Um, that's uh, more, the more mathematical of the branches of chemistry, so I'm very much into the, the math associated with chemistry. Um, Mr. Raker is also a physical chemist. He uh, assists me with the introductory um, course for chemistry majors for all science majors, actually. Uh, Dr. Hyacinth Vedigi, it, she teaches the nursing chemistry. Uh, she is a metallurgist uh, by training. We also have uh, two other uh, forensic chemists on staff. Dr. Lawrence Corino is the director of the forensic uh, program. He is a, a forensic biologist by training. And he came to us from the Chief Medical Examiner's Office of New York City. So he spent the entire summer before he came to Cedar Crest identifying 911 victims. The other forensic staff member is the newest 
um, member of our faculty. Her name is Dr. Jacqueline Spear. She's from Canada and actually our FBI and the Canadian equivalent of the FBI were both after her to come work for them, but she wanted to teach and so she came to us. We have other full-time staff. There's Mr. Thomas Pritchett. He is our instruments specialist, but he is also an environmental chemist, so he does a lot of the research associated with environmental chem. Um, we also have um, Miss Janine Kishba. She is the Forensic Quality Assurance Officer, so she also um, teaches in the forensics uh, program. We have um, an adjunct faculty member who's been with us for quite a long time, Miss Teresa Myers. She helps out, she's an organic chemist, she helps out with the organic chemistry laboratories and the nursing laboratories. First thing we're going to look at is tap water. So now the thing goes to the audience here to decide on is it going to be a strong electrolyte, a weak electrolyte, or is it a non-electrolyte? So, First thing is strong. How many people say it will be a strong electrolyte? And what I mean by that is if it's a strong electrolyte, the light bulb will glow quite brightly. If it's weak, it'll be dim. And obviously, if it's not, it'll just be like you see it, they're off. So what do we say for strong? Okay, well, all right, first, uh, no, when we say strong, okay. How many say weak? Okay, we got one for weak, none. Raise your hands here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So let me plug this in. All right. So. We'll put this in here. Yeah, we got some weak here. All right, so NaCl. Let me just kind of divide this up here so we. All right, so how many people think it's uh, going to be a strong electrolyte? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. How many think it's going to be weak? All right, zero. How many think it'll be non? Uh, all right, so there it is. Strong electrolyte. Yeah, strong. The tonight's like all of strong. Yeah. Right. What we're going to um, illustrate here, and this is our freshman chemistry class here. Um, Magnesium, of course, when you burn it, you get uh, magnesium oxide. And does anyone know where magnesium can be used? One prominent place. Fireworks, fireworks yes. Fireworks, there we go. Yay! Okay. Yeah. There it is. So that's the bright flash that you would get when you, if you look into the crucible or what you would normally expect to see, you know, during uh, the fireworks. And that's that white flash, as you see. As a sophomore, you'll be taking organic chemistry. What you'll see here is Dr. Gene Burke giving a lecture, and you'll see some footage in the laboratory setting. Also, you'll see the TAs that are helping out in the lab.
but now I'm H, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is now 2N. So for every double bond, I have to pull hyphen off of each of those carbons. Okay. Always want to get as much out as you can, especially if it's your top. So now what you need to do is get another beaker. Set this to the side now. Close it. Put that back in. Do the next portion. Okay. And just keep adding your waste to this one. So they're all going to be water layers. They should all mix in. If you find that for some reason it doesn't mix in here, then you, yeah. When you take organic chemistry lab, you'll be performing many different experiments. And these include recrystallization and synthesizing organic compounds. During your second semester of organic chemistry lab, you'll be given a number of unknown compounds. And you'll have to perform chemical tests and use the instrumentation to determine what these compounds happen to be. <laughs> The instrumentation here at Cedar Crest College is very extensive. You'll find a lot of instruments here that many colleges would love to have, including a scanning electron microscope, often used by the forensic science faculty and students, a 4A transform NMR, a 4A transform IR, <laughs> and FT does not stand for feet either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least in this so. case. So close. So, so close. close. I mean, it's Do you want to see our pretty compound? Oh, look at that. Hey, that's good. <laughs> pretty color. Okay, you know what? A UV vis spectrometer. GCMS. LC, MS, MS, among many others. The chemistry department likes to have fun during the year. Toward the end of October is Chemistry Week. In particular, there's one day that all chemists cherish. This happens to be October 23rd. Do you know why? Well, it turns out that that's Avogadro's number, at least part of it. The times 10 to the 23rd part. Get it? During that time, the Chemistry Club have a bake sale. And what's really neat about this is they actually set up a periodic table, as you can see, and they'll have cupcakes that are placed where each element is located, and they put the letters of the element right on top of the cupcake, and they sell these. We also have fun during Halloween. The faculty often decorate their offices for Halloween, as you can see. The faculty and students often dress up for Halloween. Hey, who's that crazy guy that's on the right? Hmm. All right, so uh, this is what's called the Halloween demo. And I have three graduate cylinders here with various solutions. The first one, this is a starch and sodium metabisulfite. I call it solution A. Solution B here is mercury 2 chloride. And solution C is potassium iodide. All right, so I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen ahead of time. Like this is part of the surprise, if you will. Um, I have two beakers here. One's labeled solution A and B, and the other one is solution C. Uh, so that's where those will end up. So we put A in here, and then we put uh, B in here. Now nothing will happen. That we put C into this beaker, and then we just take the solution that was A and B, pour it into C, and wait to see. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is what they call the Halloween demo for obvious reasons. Thank you. So, from the T2 and the other one's the integral from T2 to T1. They cancel each other. One's the negative of the other. So they're just going to cancel, like so. And the other two I can factor out. Pressure is the amount of pressure that gas would be exerting if it was present all by itself. 
So when we talk about air, one atmosphere, we're actually talking about, or P total, we're talking about the pressure exerted by nitrogen, plus the pressure that's exerted by oxygen, plus the pressure that's exerted by argon. When you add the protein to the column, you can use a transfer pipette. You're gonna pull up all of the protein sample in the transfer pipette. And when you add it, you wanna make sure that you're as close to the top of the column as you can be without touching the column. Be because what you don't want is, you know, you don't wanna be adding it up here because then it's like bombs dropping on the top of your column and, and that'll really disrupt the, the, the top of your column. 